So face swapping and AI avatars have taken a pretty big jump. I've got one to show you today that is really going to blow you away. Plus, we're taking a look into the future of Midjourney, at least a 12-month roadmap, and it is headed in a pretty surprising direction. All that, plus two new AI video generators that you're going to want to check out. Okay, lots to cover. Let's dive in. First off, welcome to Studio B. Uh, the main studio is having some ceiling work done, so we're going to be here for a little bit. But that's not important. What is important is this crazy face swap. Actually, 这个吃饭啊 this comes to us via AI Katana, although I don't have a source on the original footage. And obviously he is speaking in either Mandarin or Cantonese, I'm not sure which. Uh, although we do have a little bit of a translation on that coming up in just a minute. While we have seen technology like this before, I'm thinking like Snapchat filters, uh, this is kind of taking things to a whole other level. Uh, the way that it looks convincingly tracking uh, as he's eating uh, is very impressive. And then when he's sort of tugging on the cheeks as well, uh, that looks remarkably realistic. Now, I do think that the capture footage up here is actually on a different camera than what's actually being generated. Uh, if you note here, um, as he's kind of looking in this direction, it doesn't actually match the angle of the uh, deep fake version. Now, in terms of what he's using and what he's saying, ID8 Films, the channel's new unofficial translator, uh, said that he's pointing out the differences and advantages of what he's using versus current face swapping tech and that this is a model that he trained. There has been a lot of speculation that this is probably not running in real time. Rather, this is a video capture run through face swapping software. A real time face swapping does still have some issues, even as good as it is. Face swapping here to Elon Musk, uh, we can see that while well, again, it does look very good, there is still a lot of like incoherencies and morphing kind of going on. Uh, things that would not hold up to the smell test. Though this definitely looks like it has taken a significant jump up from the last generation of face swappers, namely Face Fusion and Group. I'll keep an eye on this one and I'll let you know what the process is as soon as we find out. Meanwhile, if I go to Amazon and all the wigs are sold out, I'm going to be a little disappointed in you all. Next up, the next generation of AI avatars have arrived and this time they have emotions. I am very happy. I am so upset. I am frustrated. This one comes to us from Synthesia. This is their new Express One model. Let's check it out. Now, focus on my lips. They're snappier and align more precisely with each word I say to you. And my voice. Do you hear the difference? So this is not a hey gen type situation where you will be recording yourself in order to generate your avatar, but rather uh, there will be pre-trained avatars for you to use which is understandable given that this is just a look at part of their capture rig. I'll point out that I do have room for this in Studio B, so if you're looking for an additional training location, I'm here for you, Synthesia. So let's take a look at Express One to see how much more emotive these AI avatars have gotten. I'm not convinced. I definitely need more details. I need proof of concept. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us. We really appreciate it. We'll learn more about Synthesia coming up soon. They have a launch event that is linked down below if you want to learn more. Moving on to some mid-journey news and essentially looking at their next 12 months. In this week's office hours, Nick St. Pierre reported that CEO David Holtz said for the next 12 months, it's about video, 3D, real time, and bringing them all together to non-interactive world simulator. Then we'll add the interaction layer to it. What does that actually mean? Well, it's been speculated, at least on the 3D side, that instead of generating images in Midjourney, you will instead be generating scenes, at which point you will have full 360 degree rotational camera placement control over that scene. A while back, once again, Nick St. Pierre put together a mock-up of what this might look like. Uh, once again, this is not actually Midjourney generated. This is rather a nerf that he comped into sort of an example, uh, but we can get an idea of essentially 
you know, what this 3D feature in Midjourney might look like. Midjourney's step into 3D is really fascinating and made even more exciting by the fact that Alex Evans, one of the co-founders of Media Molecule, has joined Midjourney as a principal research engineer. Media Molecule was the developer of Dreams for the PlayStation, which was essentially a 3D creation engine. One thing mentioned in the office hours was that 3D has been held back by lack of data, but data collection efforts are ramping up which kind of reminded me of the orb, a kind of a long running mid journey. I hesitate to call it a joke. It's kind of more like in urban legend. David Holtz has described the orb as a device which could generate and manage thousands of 3D rooms. And it does seem like Midjourney is very serious about the orb as they have hired Ahmad Abbas as their head of hardware. Uh, Ahmad was one of the driving forces behind the Apple Vision Pro. And we definitely know that 3D in Midjourney will come before video, although I do have two new video tools for you to check out coming up in just a minute. As a quick Midjourney side note, I recently did a sort of beginner's Midjourney course for SEM Rush. This video is not sponsored by them. It was like a whole other gig that I did, but it is a free course on getting started with Midjourney if you're interested in checking that out. The course is not just me. There are a number of other instructors in there, but I'm the other one that handles the Midjourney portion of it. Oh, Studio A, look at you. So if you're interested in a free video on how to get started with Midjourney, that link is down below. Rounding out with the Midjourney news, they recently released a new feature called Style Random. As the command name implies, this random is your style and I think it was met with a lot of like eh, what are we going to do with that but as it turns out when you start playing around with it not only is it a lot of fun but it is pretty useful for an example we're going to take an image that I previously generated this is a gumshoe detective rough but handsome I don't know about the handsome part but definitely got the rough in there uh sitting in his cluttered office holding a cup of coffee case folders all over his desk light streaming in through closed blinds cinematic uh, still film grain. So I am going to remove cinematic still and film grain because we're using style random and I don't want to call that out. And all we need to do here is issue the command dash dash s ref space random. And that gives us an image that is completely different stylistically and objectively much more hilarious. Everything about this screams like Loth Monty Python skit directed by Wes Anderson. Uh, but I can say I do really want this painting for Studio B. Writing it a few more times, we can end up with looks ranging from anime to a very stark graphic novel look. Uh, this one in particular I really like, uh, very much reminds me of Mike Mingola. To a style like this where I don't even know necessarily what I would prompt to end up with this. So obviously the real fun in SREF Random is just kind of rolling the dice and seeing what you end up with. but. Where it actually becomes very useful is when you do stumble across something that you like, you can then continue to use that style. For example, taking our super dark red splattery image here, um, all I have to do is hit this SREF button and I can put it next to a prompt like an old man standing by a tree in a city park uh, and now it will reference this style for that image. We end up with an image like this, which kind of looks like Santa on the run from a murder he just committed. Moving on, we have two new AI video generators. Uh, the first is Morph Studios, which we have previously taken a look at. Uh, this is in beta, but the beta is just beginning to roll out now. Morph style definitely leans towards kind of an animated look, although there is some pretty interesting things that you can do that we'll take a look at in just a second. Uh, you can also upload character images for consistent characters and styles. It also does have a lip sync and sound feature as well, but I think the UI is the interesting aspect of this. Heather Cooper got early access to Morph and kind of has a screen share of what the UI looks like. And this was the thing that I found fascinating in that initial look is that if you look here, there's kind of like this node based structure to it. So you can prompt reroll for different styles and then choose aspects of that to connect to the next shot and or node. As you can see here, we also have the motion brush tool and then ultimately we can connect different nodes for different exports. So. It's a really interesting workflow. I'm very curious to try it out. Heather also gave us a interesting look at two different styles in a split screen. Obviously it's split top and bottom, but uh, what's fascinating about this is that this shot is 10 seconds long. I don't have access to Morph Studio yet, but the beta is now open and they are beginning to roll access out. So as soon as I get it, I will have a deeper look at it for you. Rounding out, we have Nim Video. This is another one that is currently in beta and has a pretty interesting workspace as well. 
just walking through this very quickly, it does appear that we have options for style and character. Uh, consistent characters just seem to be a thing now. Uh, camera motion, motion strength, obviously. Uh, sound and lip sync as well. Some other features called out by Nim Video include image to video, uh, video restyling, an upscaler, and the ability to work in layers, as well as motion control, uh, regional editing, which I presume would be in and out painting, and lip syncing as well. Nim Video will also be using open source models for its platform. So if you're interested in checking it out, you can hit the link below and sign up for the beta. So that's it for today. I am going to go find something to hang behind me because Studio B feels a little bit on the empty side. I thank you so much for watching. My name is Tim.